Welcome to Travel Tidbits, Episode 23, New Cruising Protocols. This week on Travel Tidbits, join Leslie, Christy, and Jennifer as we discuss the new requirements for cruising. We will share our thoughts on the cruising industry along with the new guidelines to cruising safely. Stay tuned. The Travel Tidbits podcast, hosted by the agents of Pineapple Escapes. Join us as we discuss the latest in travel news, destinations, and tips for the savvy traveler. After all, travel makes life sweeter. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the Travel Tidbits podcast. I'm Leslie Runyon, a travel agent with Pineapple Escapes. This week, I'm joined by two of our agents, Christy and Jennifer. The three of us have experienced cruising and we are eager to get back at the seas. My last cruise was in late February, early March of 2020. We sailed with actually two other agents here at Pineapple Escapes, and we sailed for eight days on the Harmony of the Seas with Royal Caribbean, and it was an amazing cruise. Um, When we disembarked, that's when we really found out that COVID-19 was really making news, and we started to hear of possible spread of the virus. Um, Just a few short weeks later, it was when everything came to a stop and the CDC forced all cruises to stop operating. So Christy, Jennifer, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, Just to talk a little bit about cruises, when was the last time you cruised? It's been a while, probably (laughs) over a year for sure. Unfortunately, it has been. Uh, Cruises is one of my favorite things to do for vacation And the last one I went on was August of 2019. And that was kind of a last minute cruise. My son was wanting to get engaged to his fiance. And he said, I want to do it uh, in Alaska. So we booked a cruise to Alaska. We went on the uh, what was called the Explore Passage. And that was on New Holland and or I'm sorry, Holland America. And that was the first time I'd ever sailed with them. Mm -hmm. completely different experience from other cruises, very relaxed, cooking classes, educational things. At first I got on and I'm like, okay, where's the hairy chest contest? You know, this isn't (laughs) a cruise, (laughs) but (laughs) it was so relaxing. I, I really... By the time that cruise was over, I thought, okay, maybe this is the kind of cruise I like. Yeah, but yeah we did that out of Seattle um, and did the Alaska seven day cruise, and it was it was really nice. Awesome, that does sound really nice, and it is amazing how each one of these cruise ships have different things to offer. And when you think you get on one, you know, and then you go to another, and you just think that they're going to be the same, they're really not. They all have different ships, have different amenities on board, different itineraries, just 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 a different experience all around. Jennifer, what about you? When was the last time you cruised? Christy, about the same year you did, just a few months before, it was an Alaskan cruise. June of 2019, it was a nine-day cruise to Alaska. We sailed with Princess Cruise Lines, and that was the first time I'd ever sailed with them. Most of the time, it was, you know, the carnival and all the games that you were talking about. But it was also very relaxing. It was nine females from my family. My aunt purchased it for all of us. And we, yeah, we stopped at one, two, five different stops along our trip. And one port we went in, which was Canada, which was, I really, really, really enjoyed that. But they had the cooking classes, but they also mixed in a little of the, they had a casino night. Yeah. They had a, a dress up night. So there was a little bit of both in my cruise, but I believe cruising is probably one of the highlights for me as far as traveling. Back then, I wasn't I wasn't a travel agent. So I had yeah. a travel agent that did it all for us. But I was always the one that did all the booking with a travel agent and helped make all the decisions and what ports and what excursions, mm-hmm. you know. But that would have been my 10th cruise to go on. Wow. So a lot of them are different on different levels. I've been with uh, mixes of different people each time that we've gone. The first one I ever went on was a a genuine sailboat cruise. It was a large sailboat. And yeah. yes, they called it a cruise. 
But uh, <laughs> so I feel like I've hit about every level of cruising and I, I enjoy it. I hope to get back into it soon. So I'm anxious for more information in terms of when we can start doing that again. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. I really enjoyed it. I was really, I think me personally, I was kind of hooked. Luke and I went on our first cruise together. We sailed out of Miami and it was on Norwegian and it was just a short cruise. We wanted to both go on. Luke does get seasick, uh, Mm -hmm. but the only time he's really been seasick was because he went on a deep sea fishing excursion and it he was out like two miles out at sea super rough weather and he was sick nonstop for the entire day so <laughs> we wanted to try to test out our waters again on a cruise just a short one so we went with Norwegian and we went on a short cruise just to the Bahamas and you know we got really hooked because they treated us amazing because they upgraded us to the presidential suite and then we said after that we were like this is amazing. <laughs> we don't yes. know if we can ever book an interior room. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> never, never. But anyway, we just really enjoyed it. And after that, we were hooked. And I just tell so many people, even if you are, if you get seasick, you know, try it, take, there's medication, there's different mm-hmm. things you can do, mm-hmm. even different mm-hmm. sections of the cruise ship you can try out that will help. But it's just one of those things that I just really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And we all three mm-hmm. sound like we miss it. Okay, so at the core of this episode, so what are we really talking about today? So we want to really hit what the new cruising protocols are. So the big question, I'm sure maybe you guys have been asked by future clients and current clients is, can you sail? Are there cruises that are sailing right now? So, you know, whenever I've looked and we've researched different things, presently, there's no major U.S. cruises going on right now that are welcoming passengers until about May. and as we have all seen what's happening with cruise companies as, you know, we get closer to that date. Well, they're maybe just not quite ready yet with the vaccine still trying to become widely available. So they're still constantly pushing back that extending the pause on, on sailing. So right now there are not any of the major U S cruises going on, but there are a number of other cruise lines that are, have restarted their operations. And so you can sail, I think, did we hear that you can sail? Bahamas, is that correct? You can. Actually, yeah. Royal Caribbean has moved one of their ships mm-hmm. and has a sailing in the Bahamas. So yeah. they, as well as I think Crystal has two, and I think mm-hmm. Norwegians in Jamaica and Dominican Republic. So there are some yeah. options out there. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's kind of what we just kind of do to remind people is that you can cruise. It's just not out of the United States just yet. So, you know, just get a hold of your travel agent, someone here at Pineapple Escapes, and we can help direct you on where to get on a cruise. But right now, they're just not sailing out of the U.S. Mm-hmm. But we can get you on a cruise if you really want to cruise. It just won't be just won't be right here. But, mm-hmm. you know, we are keeping close contact, you know, keeping monitoring on the guidelines and those sailing dates. And, you know, we get all of that information as soon as it becomes available on when they will be sailing again. So it's kind of nice to be able to keep up with that because we are very eager to book clients. And it sounds like all three of us are eager to sail again. I think it might be maybe important to mention that even though right now, like you're talking about Royal Caribbean and Mm -hmm. um, Norwegian coming out, I have clients that are requesting into 2022. Yeah. And so I think it's important just for people to realize you can still look ahead. You can still do some talking. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people with 2021, they're still, you know, kind of shy about being able to do that and not really sure how they will accept that. So I've been giving some quotes or at least some discussions to clients about, hey, let's look at 2022 of spring break or absolutely things like that. So yeah, I think that's good too. I would really encourage people, if they are wanting to cruise, to go ahead and look at booking. Because I think once the doors open up, cruises are going to be so limited. And the nice thing, you know, we're going to talk about later, but if you do, if you are signed up for a cruise and it cancels, you know, it's not the end of the world. We're going to talk about that Mm -hmm. later, but, you know, don't let that discourage you from going ahead and booking. Absolutely. I mean, it's great to have something to look forward to, too. So yeah, booking, looking into 2022, that's perfect. Because as we have seen, too, with other bookings, you know, 
just different areas, especially with Disney, with Universal, with, you know, all inclusive in some popular locations like Cancun Mm -hmm. and the Dominican places are really filling up. You know, now that the vaccine has become available to more and more people, people are ready to travel. I mean, we have really been busy um, within this agency. We've been booking a lot. So when it opens up, it opens up and people are ready to travel and it's booking up. So yes, exactly. As you guys said, we really need to, you know, remind everyone to focus on 2022 because I mean, you want to get your spot, you want to get a great cruise, you want to get a great price. So yes, look forward to the future with that. I would also just say if that's on your radar, you're thinking you want to cruise. I know there's a lot of differing opinions on the vaccine, but I do think that's something you ought to consider getting if you plan on cruising, because right now, celebrity is requiring it for their cruises out of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Royal Caribbean, it depends on the destination. Norwegians requiring it for their crew. So I think, you know, to be prepared. So when it is up and ready, that's a good way to get ready for it. Absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk about here is what are the guidelines for someone to be able to cruise? So let's say you're looking at 2022, you're thinking ahead, you know, maybe even the end of 2021, if you want to try to get on a cruise. So what are we going to have to do to be able to cruise? So like you just said, Christy, like some of these um, cruise companies, they've already come out and said, we want you to be vaccinated. Our crew is, our crew members are being vaccinated as well, but they are saying if you are 18 and older, you need to have a vaccination. And if you're under the age of 18, they are requesting a negative COVID test. So that's what they've kind of put together so far. Like Christy just said, those were some of the cruise companies that have came out and given those protocol or given those guidelines for their to cruise with them in their cruise ship. And we're expecting more and more cruise ships to be able to put those protocols out and to be able to list those so that there are some that are still trying to get everything still together and be prepared to welcome guests on board. Also, if you're wondering what some of the new protocols are, what some of the guidelines are, you can always go to the CDC's website, www.cdc.gov, and go to the cruise ship guidance, and you'll be able to find all of those listed on there too. But yeah, like you guys said, you know, if you really are wanting to cruise, make sure you go ahead and you get your vaccine and then you'll be able to sail whenever they are opening those back up. And, you know, all I can think of is, you know, the protocols that when you're on board on a cruise, what do you always see when when you go to a restaurant? I mean, they've always got their hand sanitizer and their stuff out and it's washy washy you know, they're going to have that. They're going to really enforce, you know, trying to wash hands, sanitize. I'm sure Mm -hmm. masks will also be required when you are in public places. So those protocols will all be in place as well, I am sure. I had had, was looking at, you know, some of the things that we may see on cruise ships. And it was kind of interesting that, you know, they're developing ways so they can monitor different areas of the ship. So if uh-huh. too many people are congregated in one mm-hmm. area, there'll be some sort of, you know, to move people out away from there. Yeah. And also, you know, of course, buffets are a huge things on cruises. Yeah. So we'll yeah, probably absolutely. see that, you know, maybe handled a little differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might look a little different for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my highlights. I like the food. I like the different styles of food at the different times of day and getting to know, you know, which deck has which food at what time so I can go get in line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christy, I'm a big fan of the food. So I'm very interested to see, especially the buffet way, how they handle it. I have every confidence in them, though, mainly because of the cruises I've been on. I felt everything was very sanitary especially oh, when it came me to the too food. yeah me so, too i mean the cruises i've been on i feel like they have went above and beyond to make sure that everything is clean and that passengers feel safe no matter what situation and where you're at on board and man i miss the food too <laughs> the food actually when i we did the holland america they have the buffet lines but even pre covid with it they did all the serving for you. You didn't do oh, anything really? or anything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that may be what we see on some of the other ships. I'm sure. I mean, even just the recent all-inclusive resorts that I've been to, the buffets, I mean, just here in the past, I don't know, two or three months, the buffets have all switched to that. You cannot serve yourself for 
of anything, they will serve it all to you. So that would not surprise me if that's what you will see the buffets going to on the cruise ships as well. So it'd be interesting. It'll be interesting to find out how that all pans out and plays out. So what do you guys think about some of these new guidelines and the requirements? What do you think of how they're handling it and the things that they are putting in place, the protocols for the new sailings? Well, I guess for me, I am a big supporter of the vaccine. I don't want to get on, mm-hmm. you know, a tangent about oh, sure. supporting it or not. But being a teacher, I was probably the first one to jump online. I actually got in the line before I was supposed mm-hmm. to be in the line to get a vaccine. <laughs> you know, you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> but had both shots, didn't feel great after either. But uh-huh. I finally feel like I can go out and do something and feel better about doing things. And I right. always, I really do feel as though the cruise ships they were always going above and beyond, as you said before, Leslie. And so they're just going to take those next notches up when it comes to the buffet part of it, the getting on and off of the ship, your rooms, the way that they always clean and sanitize your rooms every day and decorated your towels for you and animals or what have you. Mm -hmm. I just feel like whatever they give to you, of course, the beginning, people aren't going to like it. There's always going to be those few. Majority of them are going to be welcoming to it. And I think each cruise line is going to do a lot the same with their own little differences, depending on ports and things like that. But I welcome it. Mm. I I welcome anything in addition to people being safe and sanitary on their own. And as I said, I'm a vaccine supporter. So if you've got a vaccine and you're ready to travel, then, you know, let's do it. And I think those cruise ships are going to work with you every way they can. I agree. And I, I've just so ready for them to get back sailing. And, and I do think it's kind of unfair that amusement parks and hotels and casinos Mm -hmm. and everybody else has got to open up and they have not. Mm -hmm. And kind of like one of those, yes, you know, there's a risk when you go, but if you're willing to take that risk, then I think they ought to let the cruise lines open up. And absolutely. I'm one of those who signed up when they, um, I think it was Royal Caribbean sent a thing out to travel agents wanting to know <laughs> who would be on a test cruise because, you know, they've got to meet yes. all these protocols. So, you know, yep. I was immediately on there. No reservations about it. I will be there, but I haven't yes. gotten a call yet to do that. So I have lots either. of volunteers. <laughs> We're going to call us. Figure. We're the first three volunteers. We're going. <laughs> I even asked my whole family. I'm like, would you go? And they're all like, yes, let's uh-huh. go. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of telling my family that. So then they have constantly, my kids have been asking, Hey, have you heard about that? Have you found anything (laughs) out? No, I don't think we're selected, (laughs) but we would go for sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I don't know, like if you realize like the cruise ships were one of the first things to really be closed down and shut down. And I mean, it has been over a year now that they have been without operating and you know, when you go to these different port of calls, you have to realize all these ships that dock, all these ships that let off all of their guests and all of the purchasing and just how much everybody that's on board a ship, how much they just provide for all of those people that are on all these different islands. I mean, their tourism is just such a huge thing for them and it supports them. And without these cruise ships running, a lot of these different islands and places in the Caribbean, they look different. They're just different. When we went to St. Thomas, they have just this huge area that is for the cruise ships to come in and it is just vacant. It's just vacant. And, you know, we went on an excursion. And one of the ladies said, like, we don't hardly have any, just we don't hardly have any people coming to do this. We are all, you know, like really reliant on cruise ships. You know, when we went to St. Thomas, we went on an excursion to snorkel. And so the lady that was giving us kind of like the tour and one of the guides, she was just saying how much their business has hurt because of not having any cruise ships and how that, you know, made up like 60 or 75% of their business. It's been a long time since they have been up and running at full capacity. So, you know, I just think of that and I think of, you know, just how many other areas have really suffered and have been hurting and how many have just completely lost their business and their livelihood because of the cruise industry being shut down. So 
you know, I really think of that. And I, I just wonder, you know, how many people have really thought about that with all of this. And I know that the cruise companies are just going above and beyond to do what ever they can to, you know, keep everybody safe and to meet all these guidelines and to be able to welcome guests on board. And I really do applaud them for that. They are really trying. They're doing the best they can. And I just can't wait to be able to see them get back up and running. It's going to be a huge, huge moment for them to be able to sail out of one of the ports here in the U.S. Agree. So, ladies, I know that I know Christy for sure, Jennifer. I don't know if you have, but I know Christy that you have had some cruise, maybe yours personally, but I know that you've had some cruises that were booked and that have been canceled and rebooked. So, how has your experience been going through the cancellation and the rebooking process of cruises? Well, this tells you just how desperate I am to get back to cruising because I just, they just keep knocking me down and I keep trying again. You get an A for effort. (laughs) I do. I had um, my husband and I and some friends originally were doing a Disney cruise last August. That one got canceled. We had the option of we could either get a full refund back, which is typically what cruise lines are doing or we could apply it to a future cruise and get 20% additional. So for example, if you booked a thousand dollar cruise, you would get $1,200 to apply towards a new cruise. Mm -hmm. So we talked among our friends, we decided, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to try that. So we rescheduled that for January. That one was again canceled. And at that point we decided, okay, we're going to take the refund, which with Disney was a very easy process. We, Mm -hmm. that money was back in, in in our cards within, I think it was two weeks. It was very quick. That's good. Yeah, it was. I was impressed with that. Um, and it was a simple phone call to take care of it. A simple phone call to the travel agent line. I'm not sure if you were a consumer just calling yourself what that would be like. Right. Then in April, I had a cruise booked with some of the other pineapple escapes agents that one was also canceled. That was a Royal Caribbean. Uh Uh That one, I took the money back. And then I scheduled another one for June on Disney. (laughs) I know. (laughs) On Disney, it just got canceled a couple weeks ago. I already have the money back in my account. So now we're going to Disney World in June. I've I've given up for right now, but I'm looking for another one. (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, is it the fourth time the charm? The fifth time? I'm not for sure. Yeah. I didn't count all those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're gonna get there. You're gonna get well, there. Well, look at it I this am. way. You're gonna have more money to take with you. That's right. More right. spending money That's to go right. on this trip, which That's is not right. always the best, but <laughs> right. more, more money to put towards that presidential suite or something. Exactly. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, I will say, like, I, I had um I had several cruises that were booked went at the beginning of this. So a year ago when uh, everything shut down and, you know, for those people that had canceled or that had, you know, just decided to rebook that whole process from then versus now has become mm-hmm. so much better. <laughs> I, I mean, sure. it's just so much better just because they know they know what they're doing now. Everything's a little bit more put together. It's like Christy said, you know, she's got her money back within a couple of weeks. I know when this all started, it took a lot longer for people to get refunds, to get everything processed. But there was such a large amount of people getting everything canceled all at once. So now things are much more streamlined and they're organized and they know what they're doing with all of this. So now the process is much, much easier. So if you want to if you want to rebook, if you want to be like Christy and go ahead and try and, you know, mm-hmm. cross your fingers, maybe you'll get, maybe they'll start sailing again. Go for it. And if not, if you have booked with one of us, we will get you squared away with canceling that and rescheduling it or whatever you may need. So for our slice of life, this kind of brings us into this. So what are we doing with our future cruise traveling? So do any of you, I know Christy, you have said you have tried <laughs> <laughs> and tried again <laughs> and tried Jennifer do you have any cruises that you have booked coming up or that you want to maybe look at going on well since this, this is my first really half a year I guess being a travel agent mm-hmm. things that I've booked have not been cruises I did <laughs> get my first hit on a cruise last week it's from a friend and she's wanting to do it at Christmas 
Uh-huh. And luckily enough, you know, we talked about Royal, Car- Royal Caribbean is beginning to open dates and it's been much easier and smoother than I expected. I knew how to do it with how I have done it in the past with a travel agent. So mm-hmm. I just kind of put that information together. So I'm working on one, which is good for me. The more practice, the better. My husband and I have talked at great length about where else we would like to go. We've done the whole Bahama, Cancun, Cozumel, you know, all of those. Loved loved all of them. Loved their Coco Cay, you know, their own islands and things like that. We love to be in warm weather, Mm -hmm. hot as it can be. And so we've talked about something in in Greece, the Greek islands. Oh, um, yeah, that'd be beautiful. That whole vicinity, yes. And, you know, our kids are about out of the house. They're both graduating college next year. And so this is something we'd like to do with some friends. Yeah. So I've, I've really kind of gotten into listening to some podcasts and just other things that will help me plan it, put it together. Um, just kind of put it out there. That's all very foreign to me in that area. I've never traveled right there. So I would say that would be for us, uh, definitely a goal within the next year, year and a half. Yeah. For me, I'm right there with you. I really like warm weather (laughs) and the beach. And so my husband really would love to go to Alaska. And so I love to cruise. So I'm saying, you know, like cruising, in my honest opinion, I think taking a cruise to Alaska is probably the best, the best way. But Mm -hmm. so that's, we are compromising and we are saying, let's cruise to Alaska. So that is something that we are looking into. I am very eager to see when they're going to start opening back up with cruises. And I can't wait to really just start, start really figuring things out with what we want to do and where exactly we want to go and to start that whole process. But me, along with, I'm sure everybody else, we have like a whole list of places that we're (laughs) ready to go to next. But yes, Christy, what was your, out of those that you were going to go to, do you feel like you're going to try to go back or do you want to go someplace else? I think I'm going to go someplace else. I was I was choosing those because I hadn't done a Disney cruise and I wanted to experience that. I've done Holland America, I've done Carnival, yeah. I've done Royal Caribbean, but I just wanted to have that under my belt. But now as I think about it, because I'm like Jennifer, I've done, I don't know how many, 10 to 15 cruises. I really want to expand my knowledge and do something really different. So I think yeah. a some kind of a European river cruise oh, is yes. probably yeah. what is on my list. And and I don't know where yet because every itinerary I look at, mm-hmm. I love. And so uh-huh. it's, that's going to be the hard part, deciding exactly where. But that's one of those things I want to experience to be able to help people with that process. Well, you know, maybe you're like half of America right now and you're just saying, I don't care where you take me, just take me anywhere. <laughs> yes. You know, that's that's yes. kind of true too. So Yes. <laughs> I don't really care where we cruise to, just as long as we cruise somewhere. <laughs> well, maybe you can combine, you could do some of your Disney, but yet some of the river cruise because they, I have not gotten to do anything like that, but the Disney adventure cruises yes, with your own guide and your own little group, yes, uh, those sound absolutely wonderful and all being through Disney and just, just looking at what they get to yeah. do, watching videos. You could maybe do a little bit of both. Yeah. That might you know, if you. it was, if that was, you know, if it's done by Disney, it's going to be done right. It would yes. be mm-hmm. like the ultimate. So yeah, that's that's a real possibility. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. If you're on a Disney cruise, you could cruise anywhere and it would be it would be an amazing time. I have Agreed. no doubt with that. All right. So we crushed it with five pineapple rings, travel favorite of the week. So we're gonna talk about I know I have a couple of my favorites that I have listed here. And maybe Jennifer and Chrissy can share if they have any experience with these, but we will have the link listed here so you can click on that. But these are just a couple of some of the favorites that I have whenever I like to take with me when I cruise. The first one is just like these lanyards. Like when you have a lanyard with you, whenever you cruise, it's just so much easier. You can put your card Mm -hmm. in this lanyard and you don't have to worry about losing it. It's around your neck. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I guess Mm -hmm. you can probably still lose it, but it makes it a lot, a lot harder for that to happen. So I really think those are a must. I know that Luke and I have 
tried putting them in our pockets before and it's just kind of a hot mess. So we like to have the lanyards. And my second one is these luggage tags. So these are waterproof plastic luggage tags. And if you guys have ever cruised before, you will know that they will send you their, you know, your little luggage tag that has your information on it. So that notifies the people of where to send your bags. Those are paper. They're just paper. (laughs) So you got to cut those out and fold them up and Mm -hmm. staple them on your bags. And Mm -hmm. I mean, if you walk down the cabin area, you know, in the hall, as you go to your room, you can see half of the peoples are ripped by the time they make it to Mm -hmm. your cabin. So these plastic luggage tags are perfect. Like they fit right in like your little, your little information tag there fits right into these and they are actually zip up to where they are waterproof and nothing's going to tear them away. So I love those. Those are some of my favorites. I have actually given them away for extra pixie dust to some of my clients that have cruised before. And I actually have put that on as one of our giveaways for the pineapple escapes giveaways that we have had on our, on our Facebook page. So those are just a couple of my favorites. Ladies, did you guys have anything that you love to take with you when you cruise? Well, I have to say first, I had to click on those tags because I have yeah. never seen those before. Really? I will, yeah. No, I will definitely have those before my next cruise. Uh-huh. The other thing related to cruising that is a must have for me is um, you, we talked about motion sickness earlier. And I'm a person who, you all know, uh, at Disney, wherever I can ride any ride, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> but <laughs> there's something about uh, being on a ship in the evening. I don't get sick, sick, but I just don't feel quite right. Feel a little sure, lightheaded yeah. and so forth. And so I discovered it's an essential oil blend. It's called Motion Ease. Mm-hmm. They usually sell it on the ships. They usually sell it, uh, I think it's on Amazon, but it works better than anything I've tried. Just a little behind the ear and that's you're awesome. good to go. So that's one of my must haves for cruises. Yeah. Do you put it on in the morning? I'm just curious. Do you put it on in the morning and at night? Do you do it every day? What I just, what I would just generally do it in the evening because, you know, a lot okay. of times, especially if it's a port day, I would wait till... You know, mm-hmm. I got back on and put it on, but um, okay. it's great stuff. And I actually, my daughter-in-law tried it when we went on that Alaskan cruise and um, cause that was her first cruise and it really helped her too. So nice That's alternative great. to getting a prescription or getting something that makes you drowsy. That's right. The That's last right. cruise uh, we went on with a bunch of people, a friend of mine does get the motion sickness and even if she didn't, there's no way she could. She had on a bracelet, you know, each <laughs> wrist. She had the little dots behind her ears. She was taking medicine like the first two days to her. And this is so not really funny, but one of her wristbands that she was wearing got so tight that it started cutting circulation off to her hand. And I was like, you, you have got to just go without for a few hours and see if you are okay. You know, this is day three and she's still doing whatever, whatever gets you on there and lets you have a good time. I'm all for it. Uh She was ready. She didn't have essential oils though. Maybe next time. Yeah. There you go. You got a tip for her. Maybe try those. (laughs) Yes. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Uh not to, you know, poke fun of all of those sufferers of motion sickness, but you know, you kind of have to look around at the ship and you know, who's getting sick and who's not. Everyone's got those little dots behind their ears. (laughs) (laughs) Uh You know who it is, but anyway, those are all really helpful if you do suffer from motion sickness. So yes, that Mm -hmm. is awesome. So anyway, you can check out all of these. We will have links connected with this and you can click on those and check those out. We highly recommend these items. They will just help enhance your cruising experience. So. Can I throw one out real quick? Is that okay yes, with you? Yes, absolutely. Go for it. Well, I had written down a couple things. I'll make it very quick. I'm big on the excursions. Yeah. I try and find one that we all like. And I've done several every time we've went. So I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. A sling bag is very... Yeah. I have to have one to get off the ship. I just can't. As mom, you're always carrying everything. Mm-hmm. So those who have mom have to carry what have you. But then inside the sling bag... I'm always having my phone with my camera, you know, all that stuff. I buy one of those waterproof plastic containers. 
Yeah. They're like an order box, but they're really not. And I will stick that in the sling bag to keep my phone in as well. But just a lightweight sling bag, pineapple scapes. We have sling bags that we could give us pixie dust, but just, you know, something to be able lightweight to carry things on and off with you. I just think that's super important for me. I can't, I don't think I can ever go anywhere without carrying anything. It's a mom <laughs> thing. Always. I want to go to Absolutely. Disney World one time without having to carry, you know. You wouldn't but know what to do. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yeah. No. So just some type of a sling bag. And I just add in there, as I said, that cover for my phone. Just mm-hmm. you never know when you're on one of those duck boat excursions and you're going to toss your phone off or something into the water. Yeah. So anyway, I well, thought those I mean, were a couple of things. That is super important because that is your, you know, you have your information with you that you need to get back on that boat. And if you lose something. Yes. Yeah. That's not going to be fun. So no, not at all. yeah, it's very important that you have something to carry those. So that's a really, that's a really good idea there. Okay. Ladies, I thank you guys so much for joining us. It was fun talking to you guys yeah. about just these new cruising protocols and upcoming cruises and how this has all just came into play this past year with cruising just being down and nothing going on and just the things that we all have to look forward to. So thanks for sitting and talking to us this morning. And thank every thank you everyone for joining us today as we have just discussed these new cruising protocols and the new requirements. You can find all of our Pineapple Escape agents at the web at www.pineappleescapes.com. And our site includes a link to all of our Travel Tidbits episodes, plus information about all of our agents and links for our social media. We'd love to have you join our community. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode of the Travel Tidbits podcast hosted by Pineapple Escapes. Travel makes life sweeter. Let the experts help you plan a vacation with lasting memories. We'd love to help you plan your next vacation and have you join our community. You can find us on the web at www.pineappleescapes.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Pineapple Escapes. 